Shalom. Today we are going to continue with a new lesson in the never-ending Hebrew verb structure program. Today we're going to cover infinitives. The infinitive form in Hebrew is called Shem Hapal. An infinitive in English just has the word to before it. I want to go, to see, to eat. We have the same form in Hebrew. Again, a review of the chart at the Binyanim. On the left side, we have the active forms, pa'al, pi'el, hifil. On the right side, we have the passive forms, nifal, pu'al, hafal. And at the bottom, hitpa'el, the reflexive form. And we're going to cover all these forms. Remember again, when we talk about pe hapo'al, we're talking about the first letter of the root. Ayin hapo'al is the middle letter of the root. Lamed hapoal is the third letter of the root. So we have the example shamar, pe hapoal, and shamar is shin. Ayin hapoal is mem. Lamed hapoal is resh. And so we have these, in general, five irregular forms. Sometimes they change slightly. We've covered all the present tense and the different binyanim for these irregular verbs. They're regular in their irregularity. We have the drop letter imperfect, where the first letter might be he or nun or yud. In the future tense, that letter drops out of the root in the conjugation. We have hollow verbs, where the middle letter is either vav or yud. We have verbs that the last letter is aleph, ones that the last letter is he and ones that the last letter is either ayin or chet, so they behave the same way. And we have carried these through all the binyanim, and the changes that occur are quite regular, even through all the binyanim. So we're going to start with shamar, and the idea of to guard or to keep is lishmor. So we get the lamen in front, which means to, get a chirik unto the lamen. There's a shva under the first letter, and then we have this insertion of the cholem. You might see it, cholem aleful or cholem chaser, just the dot empty. But we have this form, lishmor. Here's an example from Genesis 3.24. V'yigoresh et ha'adam, v'yashken mikedem lagan eden, et ha'kruvim ve'et lahat ha'cherev, ha'mitapechet lishmor et derech et ha'chayim. God has put Adam and Eve out of the garden, and he has stationed there these cherubim, the keruvim, and this flashing sword, lishmor, to guard, to watch the way to the tree of life. For the verb root halach, which means to go, halach is a drop letter imperfect. The hay is at the front. And so uh, many of these drop. In the infinitive, the infinitive form of halech, to go, is la lechet. You will see a similar form for yoshev, la shevet, yored, la redet. We'll see some other examples, to walk, to go. In Genesis 24, 5, Eliezer has gone to get a bride for Isaac. Vayomer elav ha'eved, ulai lo tove ha'isha la lechet acharai el eretz hazot. And so he says, that he, Eliezer is the eved, he's a servant. Ulai, perhaps, lo tove, she doesn't want ha'isha, the woman, la lechet, to go to follow me, acharai, to come behind me, la lechet. This root, bo, gives us an example of a hollow verb. In the hollow verbs, we see in the past and present tense, we don't see the vav or the yud in the middle. But in the infinitive form, we see the middle letter, lavo, to come. In Exodus 40, 35, v'lo yachol Moshe lavo el ohel moed. And Moses was not able to come to the tent of meeting, lavo. Here is an example of a verb ending in aleph. And we don't see any change, really. We have the chirik at the front, the shva under the first letter, and the cholem chaser, likro, to call. A verse which I imagine you're familiar with in Genesis 4, 26. L'shet gam hu yulad ben, v'yikra et shmo enosh. And Seth 
had a son, and he called his name Vayikra. It's remember Vayikra. It's conjugated as a future, but we read it in the past for the vav conversive. It's the same kara. He called his name Enosh. As hu chal lekro b'shem Yehovah. From that time, he began to call on the name of Yehovah. We also have verbs which end in hey. If you remember. They have a slightly different present tense, and they have, in the past tense, they lose the hey. We get a yud. So the past tense for ose goes asiti, asita. We don't say the hey until the third person, asa. And then in the third person feminine, we see asta, and there's a tav. So similarly, in the infinitive, these verbs, which end in hey, are going to end in ot. They're going to drop the hey, and we have this form la asot with the cholam and the tav to make or do. From Genesis eleven six, vayom Yehova hen am echad b'sefa achat lechulam b'ze hachilam la asot v'yata lo yibatzer mehem kol asher. Yazmu la asot. La asot is in there twice, talking about the people that he comes down to see they're building the tower. And he says they will not be stopped from everything that they dream up, that they imagine la asot to do. Finally, we have these verbs which end in ayin or chet. And if you remember in the present tense, these verbs get an extra vowel. So the present tense is shomeya. Remember, for shamar, to guard, it's the present tense is shomer. But this would be shomea. And in the infinitive, they also get an extra vowel, lishmoa, lishmoa, to hear. In Deuteronomy 29.3, V'lo natan Yehova lechem lev ladat v'inayim lirot v'oznayim lishmoa ad hayom hazeh. God didn't give them a heart, a desire to, to know, or eyes to see. This is lirot. Uh, this is a verb that ends in hey, rish, aleph, hey. In the shem ha'poel, in the infinitive, remember we lose the hey, we get lirot to see. Ve'oznayim lishmoa, and ears to hear. Ad hayom hazeh, until this day. Verbs which are in the nifal get an extra hey in the infinitive. So we don't have anything lilachem or something like this. It's lahilachem. There's an extra hey there. This is a nifal form. Now the meaning for this means to do battle, and we don't think of it in terms of passive, but it does take that form always. In Exodus 17.10, V'ya'as Yehoshua ka'asher amar Moshe. And Joshua did, as Moses told him, to fight, to do battle with Amalek. It's got an extra hey in it. For this root, Shava, it means to take an oath or to be under an oath. It's also always in the Nifal. And I'm sorry about the dots in the middle of the shin. Obviously, one of them belongs up top to show you it's a shin and the other one is a dagish. But again, this is a verb that ends in ayin, so it's going to have that extra vowel in it, lahishavea, to take an oath, to be under an oath. From Jeremiah 12, 16. Vehaya im lamod yilmedu et arche ami lahishavea bishmi chai hova. And it will be if they would surely learn the ways of my people to swear in my name, to make oaths in my name, and thus they would say, Yehovah lives. Ka'asher limdu et ami lehishavea, as they taught my people to swear la baal, to swear to baal. So then there's a promise if they would turn their ways from swearing to baal to swearing or taking an oath in Yehovah's name. Then the next verse tells us that good things will happen. Moving on to a PL form, we have this root, Lamad. Now remember, Lamad forms in the Pa'al. It means to learn, but in the PL, it means to teach. So in the PL, if you remember, in the present tense, we have Milamed, Milamedet. Uh, starts with Mem, but it has a different vowel configuration with this Patach. 
and the tsere. So that's what we also see in the infinitive lilamed in Deuteronomy 6.1. V'zot ha-mitzvah ha-chukim ha-mishpatim asher tziva Yehova Elohechem lilamed etchem la-asot ba-aretz asher atem ovrim shama l'rishta. Moses is speaking and he says to the people, this is the commandment, these are the statutes, these are the judgments, which Yehovah command, your God, Yehovah your God commanded to teach you. Moses is the one who is responsible, Lilamed, to teach the people to do these things. Another verb we see in P-L, Nisa, so this ends in He, but it's going to have the same idea of the extra syllable, le na sot, but it ends in ot, just as all the verbs which end in he. Le na sot, to try or to prove. From Judges 3 4, vayihiyu le na sot baam et Yisrael le daat hayishmu et mitzvot Yehova asher tziva et avotam biyad Moshe. And it would be to try to prove them, that is Yisrael, to know, will they listen to the mitzvot of Yehovah, which he commanded their forefathers by the hand of Moses, what we were just talking about. Lenasa, the infinitive, to try to prove, to test. This root from Genesis, this will be our first hephil root. So we see the he from the hephil and the extra yud, as we see in the other forms, the present tense, mavdil, the future tense, avdil, the past tense, hivdil. So here's the hey and the yud. This is the infinitive form. Vayomer Elohim, Yehim Orot Barakia, Hashemayim, Lehavdil, Ben Hayom, Uven Halayla. And there will be lights in the heavens to separate between the day and and the night. Genesis 1 14. When we bring Shema into the he field to cause to hear or to announce something, here's the He, here's the Yud, but because it ends in Ayin, there's the extra vowel, Lehashmia. From Isaiah 58 4. Hen Tatsumu, Ulehakot be'egrof resha lo tatsuma kayom lahashmia b'marom kolchem. For strife and for debate you are fasting, and to strike with the fist of wickedness you are not fasting like like this day lahashmia to make heard kolchem your voice on high. When we bring the hollow verb into he feel, we have the hey. We lose the middle letter, but we have the yud of the hefil. So, bo in hefil, lehavi, to bring. From Exodus 36, 5, Vayamru el Moshel lemor, mar bim ha'am lehavi midei ha'avoda lemelacha, asher tziva Yehova la'asot ota. And they said to Moses, So although this appears in an infinitive in Hebrew, it would be almost impossible to translate it. The marbim is uh, like in, in a multitude, but we can't say in a, in a lot uh, as a verb. The people are a lot to bring too much for the work. But in Hebrew, it works. Marbim is a verb, and it's a present tense verb. And lahavi is the infinitive to bring. In the normal hitpa'el, uh, a verb you must be familiar with, Lehit palel, which means to pray. So in the hit pa'el, we see the other forms. The past tense form is going to have hey tav for it. And then you have this, this vowel structure. Lehit palel, to pray. In 1 Samuel 1 12, Vahaya ki hirbita lehit palel, lifne Yehovah, ve'eli shamer et piha. Chana is praying, and again, it's the same verb idea of the previous one, that it's a multiplication, she multiplied to pray. We wouldn't translate it with an infinitive in English. When we go to the drop letter in perfect, we see that all the letters of the root return in the hit pa'el. Lehit halech, the he is there. V'ya'an ha'ish ha'omed ben ha'hadasim v'yomer ela. Asher shalach Yehovah lehitalech 
Ba'aretz. These are the ones that Yehovah has sent to walk through the earth. A verb uh, with the idea of going astray, going off the path. The root is shaga. So we have two principles here. The first is, if you recall, in the Hitpa'el, when you have a sibilant, an S, Z, Tz, Z, these sounds in the Hitpa'el, the Tav and the sibilant sound trade places. So we don't have Lehit Shaga, we have Lehish Ta, and because it ends in Ayin, we have the extra vowel again, Lehish Tagea, which means to go crazy. In 1 Samuel 21, 16, so we find David acting the fool in front of Achish's house, and Achish says, Chaser meshugaim ani ki hivetem et ze lehishtagea alai, haze yavo el beti. Am I lacking for crazy people that you have brought this one to go nut by me? Will he come in my house? And they send him away. This is one of the more irregular roots, and it appears in a lot of different forms, but the infinitive is regular. Shecha means to prostrate oneself, to bow down in worship. So again, we have the metathesis, the switch of the shin and the tav, lehishtacha, and as we see the hey at the end, we get the vav, but it's the vav, it's a consonantal vav with the o, lehishtacha vot, it's pronounced. In Leviticus 26.1, lo ta'asu lachem elilim, fesel umatseva, lo takimu lachem ve'eben, maskit lo titnu ba'artzechem, lehishtacha vot aleha, ki ani yehova elohechem. Don't make any idols of any kind to bow down to them. So now we're going to look at some roots in different binyanim so we can compare them. This is a root that starts with a yud. It's a drop letter imperfect, and also it ends in aleph. So let's see what happens. In the pa'al form, we see the infinitive is latzet. It loses the yud, and it gets a tav at the end, the same as la lechet la shevet. Let's set to go out. Deuteronomy 31.2. Vayomer alehem ben mea ve'esrim shana anuchi hayom, lo uchal od latzet ve'lavo, ve'yehova amar elai, lo ta'avor et hayarden hazeh. Moses is speaking. He's saying, I'm 120 years old. And I cannot go out and come in anymore. Besides, I'm not going over the Jordan with you. So this is the pa'al form, latzet. In Exodus 6, 27, Hem hamidabrim el paro melech mitzrayim lahotzi et b'nei Yisrael mi mitzrayim hu Moshe v'aharon. The ones that are speaking to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, lahotzi, it's, it's the he feel form. I think we talked about this somewhere, <laughs> that the he feel form, when it starts with yud, is the yud will change to a cholem. So this is exactly the same form when you say your blessing, hamotzi lechem min ha'ar. It's the one that's a present tense, the one who is bringing out. Here it's talking about who's going to be bringing them out, Moshe and Aaron, who are they going to bring out? B'nai Yisrael, Lahotzi, to bring them out. So this is the he feel form of the infinitive. Here is a hollow form, which does some peculiar things in the different binyanim. We had a separate presentation on that. So this verb itself appears more than once in this quote. It's Jeremiah 8, and I think we discussed it in the special presentation. Madua shoviva ha'am haze Yerushalayim mishuva nitzachat echeziku betarmit meanu lashu. So first let's look at the lashu. It's the infinitive form of the hollow verb. So we see all the letters of the verb lashu to return. It's a pa'al form. The shoviva is a pl form. The hollow verbs in the PL double the last letter. That was in a different presentation. We're going to see it here. In Isaiah 49.5, V'ata amar Yehovah 
יוצרי מבטן לעבד, לא לשובב יעקב אליו, וישראל לא יאסף אכבד בעיני יהובה ואלוהי היה עוזי. And now says Yehovah, the one who formed me in the womb, to be his servant, Lishovev. So this is hollow verb in Piel, Lishovev. It's very rare, but we do see that there's this extra bet at the end. Finally, we're going to see this root in the Hephiel form in Numbers 5.8. If the, if the man, the guilty man, does not have a goel, a redeemer, lehashiv, not exactly to cause him to return, but to maybe to give restitution for the guilty party. But this is how the he feel infinitive is formed. We see the shin and the vav, but the yud is in the middle for the he feel. So let's look at all these three forms together. It's a hollow form. The root is shin vav bet. In the pa'al, the infinitive is lashuv. In the pi'al, the shovev, it gets an extra bet. And in the hifil, lehashiv. I forgot to mention that there, there are no infinitives for the pu'al and the hofal. They just don't exist. So that saves us some problem anyway. Let's have another example. Here's a verb that ends in hey bana, to build. From Genesis 11.8. V'yafetz Yehovah otam misham al pnei kol ha'aretz v'yachdilu livnot ha'ir. And Yehovah scattered the people who were building the tower, and they left off livnot. So this is a verb that ends in hey. We drop the hey, and we get that ot ending to build. They left off. We would say from building, but they maybe they quit. To build, I don't know, I think you can't say it in English, but it's the infinitive in Hebrew, to build. That's the pa'al. In Haggai, chapter 1, verse 2, Ko amar Yehovah tzvaot lemor, ha'am hazeh amru, lo et bo et bet Yehovah lehibanot. The people are saying, it's not time, the time has not come for the temple of God, bet Yehovah lehibanot, to be built. Remember, this is a nifal. It's a passive form. We have the extra hey, but still it ends in hey at the end, and so we get the ot ending. Lehiba note, to be built. If we look at these side by side, livnot is the pa'al, to build. The nifal, lehiba note, to be built. Here are some examples without any scriptures, but I hope you can understand it. So we have a root, bet, Yud, Nun, and probably you are most familiar with the Hefiel, Lehavin, to understand. It's hollow. So remember the hollow in the PL, the last letter will double. So you get Livonen with two Nuns. And also the same rule applies to the Het Pa'el. We went over this in a separate video, how this works in the PL and the Het Pa'el. So in the Hitpa'el, you have lehitbonen, to be wise. Again, looking at the root shama, to listen. The pa'al, it ends in ayin. We're going to get an extra vowel. You see, the extra vowel is in every binyan. Lishmoa, to listen. In the nifal, lehishamea, to be heard. The news was heard. So we have the hey at the beginning for the nifal. Ends in ayin, it gets the extra patach. In the hefiel, lehashmia, you have the hey and the yud for the hefiel, the extra vowel under the ayin, to announce, to cause other people to hear, to announce, lehashmia. And there's also a hitpa'el form, lehishtamea. So you see we have the reversal of the letters. The shin comes before the tav but you still have the extra vowel at the end. One more root that you know. Ra'a, to see, ends in hey, it's going to end in ot. The infinitive to see is lir'ot. And the hitpa'el, which means we will see each other, a word you know, lehitra'ot. So I know this has been a lot of information. You can go over it again slowly, slowly. 
but hopefully you have absorbed enough about the conjugations in the binyanim to be able to recognize what's going on here. I hope this is edifying to you. I hope it's helpful to you. And lehitra'ot. I'll see you another time. Shalom.